Welcome to the StockMentor.com studios here in the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. I'm your stock mentor, Brian Johnson, and I'm making professional trading simple. Yes, for all of you geography people out there, South Dakota is one of the 50 states. We are not in Canada, as some people think we are. That was like a Jay Leno thing. That was one of the questions Jay Leno asked one time is South Dakota. Where's South Dakota? And someone said in Canada. No, we're not in Canada. We're actually below North Dakota, which is why they are North Dakota, and we are South Dakota. We have Mount Rushmore. If you guys ever make it out this way, you have to stop and take a look. It's really a beautiful country. It's a beautiful place to visit. So there's my plug for the South Dakota State Tourism Division. They can send their check care of. No, I'm just kidding. Welcome, guys. Uh, I told you it might be a consolidation day. Uh, I'm pretty sure this would be considered a consolidation day. Really didn't move anywhere. Pretty flat uh, most of the day. Good day, as I said. Walk your dog. Play with the kids. Enjoy the fall weather. Um, not much trading to be done today. There were a few equities that actually worked out very nicely. If you had them on your charts, you made some money on them, and I hope you caught them. We'll get into that in just a second. Ivan, got your email. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Cannot wait. Uh, look forward to seeing you hopefully at the end of the month. Uh, you're real close. You're real close, man. Uh, let's just put a few of the puzzle pieces together for you, and, and I know that you'll, uh, uh, you'll be very happy. So I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to talk with you uh, more at the end of the month. And in the markets, let's break into it. You can see the uh, Dow moving sideways here, just kind of in a chop fashion. If I drew a line in here, you can see the symmetrical triangle that we're kind of starting to make uh, line down through here, line down through here. When I get a little bit more information, I'll go ahead and put that in. I think things are going to start to pick up now these next three days, guys. So be on guard. Uh, which way? Don't know yet. We're going to let the charts tell us that. I am not going to make a guess at this point. Guessing is not what I do. I have discovered I am not a good gambler. That's just not what I'm good at. Uh, so I don't gamble because I I've very rarely win. I like to stack the probabilities in my favor, and that seems to work a lot better for me. So we're seeing a lot of chop action here. As you can see, we had a, a run up, a really nice run up to start the week as we were talking about, and now we have this move down. For those of you that are Elliotticians, let me just zoom this in a little bit. Some of you that follow that whole Elliott wave thing, you know about the wave one, wave two, wave three, but this kind of looks like a little one, two, three up. This could be a four down for a five up left. Uh, where that takes us, I don't know. Will it take us above the highs? Hard to know quite yet. Hard to know yet. But we are back. What I do know is this. I don't trade what I think. I trade what I know. And what I do know is this. We are back to a support level right here. So if the bears are going to get any more traction, they've got to get below this area and, and drag this down and keep it down here for any length of time. They really need to get back below here. This 9641 area is really where they need to get on the Dow. On the NDX, take a look. I drew in that little triangle on the NDX. We're looking for a break up and above 1735 if you're bullish. I would think that there would be uh, some more bears that will cover if we get up and above this area. Otherwise, a breakdown not only puts us below the trend line, it puts us below the 20 period moving average on the 60 minute. These are your targets for tomorrow. Be watching that uh, very closely. Also, keep in mind tomorrow is month end. Uh, important to remember, there's a big talk about the window dressing and oh, you know, statements go out at the end of September. Some of them are quarterly. I think there's some yearly statements. I'm just, I'm not positive of that, but I know quarterly statements are done at the end of September. And, you know, they might want to make them look as nice as they can so that when mom and pop get their little uh, envelope, they're not afraid to open it, take a look and go, look, honey, we're making our money back. We've only lost $100,000 instead of $200,000. Aren't we blessed? And then they'll go out and buy a new TV. That's the plan anyway. That's what the uh, the markets are. That's what the economy is hoping for is that they'll go out and do that. I don't think that's how it would work, but you just never know. NDX on a daily. You can see we pulled back almost to this dotted line. That's kind of what I was looking at. You can see this inverted hammer we had here. I said if it's going to turn, it needed to turn right now, and, and, and it did. The markets did bring it back up. But here you can see a sideways consolidation type of a move on the NASDAQ. The weekly still were only Tuesday. Uh, so, but still, we are above the 200 period moving average. 
still needs to be watched from a weekly. I'm really not going to get too concerned about that until Thursday night into Friday. Uh, SPX on a 60 minute, we broke back up above here. Now we've pulled back. Now this is interesting. Look how we gapped up today to this 1069, basically the 1070 area. Uh, and now we've moved back down. I uh, could see another little push back here, maybe even overnight into this upper trend or this 1057 area. That would make total sense to me. But look at it on a daily. Let me show you why that's interesting. Look how it touched that 1070 area, which now is this upper channel line again. We broke out of it, stayed above it for a while, popped back into it. Now we're retesting it and it's holding again as resistance. This is a really good channel line right here. I'm loving this line. Uh, this is showing me uh, this is showing me uh, validity to the line itself, and uh, I would certainly, if you're intraday trading, especially the ETFs, be watching this area as it nears it again, uh, if it nears it again in the next coming days. SPX on a weekly, same thing. We're right back up to this big resistance line that I showed you, but you know it's Tuesday. We're going to worry about more about that when we get later into the week of VIX, as you can see. Uh, just still struggling, it really moves sideways uh, up a percent today, but for all practical purposes, just moves sideways in the markets right above the 20 and the 50 has this overhead resistance. Once again, I'm really watching the weekly because on the weekly, I can see it a little bit more clear. I'm looking for a break above the 20. Actually, I close above this 20 and then a close above this 30. If we get some sort of a big crash towards the end of the week. Uh, watch for the VIX to finally get its weekly close above one of these two levels. That would really signal, I would think, will really start to signal uh, the pullback in the markets. Apple, we've been watching this one 